Good morning, and good morning, everyone who have joined us today on Facebook and on YouTube. Welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church, Sunday morning, Sunday school, thanking God for this, another day that he has made. Joining us um, are, is our senior pastor, Reverend Tori Williams, right down there um, in the bottom. And right across from me, you have Reverend Thompson and uh, Brother Thompson sitting beside me is Brother Hutchings. I am Reverend Haverly Hutchings, and we're going to go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this your day. Thank you for us waking up and being here, Lord God, in obedience to your call. I'm asking you, Lord God, to give each of us the strength that we need and give us, Lord God, the, the word that you want us to speak out of our mouth so that your people can hear your word and come to a better understanding, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're about to do. Bless this word unto our heart and let us have a blessed and peaceful day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Over to you, Reverend Thompson. Thank you, Reverend Hutchings. Amen. As Reverend Hutchings said, welcome this morning. We're going to continue where we left off. We gave you homework. We gave you something to chew on. So hopefully you went and did what we requested of you, which was to study. Um, Brother uh, Hutchings read verses 47 of Deuteronomy chapter 28 is where we were in. He read 47 all the way through um 60 no 47 all the way to 57 so those 10 verses he read and so uh pastor said go chew on that get you some homework and study so hopefully you study because we're about to discuss it that's what we're starting off this morning getting right into it um because there's a lot of good meat in here amen and we're going to walk through it so as always we're reading out of the king james version unless we otherwise state and again we're in deuteronomy um, which is in the Old Testament, chapter 28, picking up at verse 47. And the title of it is Israel will be enslaved. And we start talking about the blessings that God called them on. And now Moses get into those curses and he's going further into the warning of disobedience. So what will happen if you disobey um, and break the covenant that they are making? So uh, verse 47 through uh, 57, Brother Hutchings, I don't, I believe pastors should probably take it verse by verse, however you want to do it, but go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Uh, verse 47, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Okay, let's pause right there. As you said, verse by verse, because it's, this is setting the tone for this entire um, blog here that they did, all the verses. It says, um, because thy serve, N-O-T. You didn't serve the Lord thy God. Thy serve not the Lord thy God. You didn't serve him joyfully. You didn't serve him with gladness. You didn't serve him with gladness of heart. And for all, we didn't praise him. He said, you didn't praise me for all things. Yeah. So we have here the not, the joyfulness, gladness of heart and abundance of all things. Mm -hmm. And we know that those are things that we should be serving God with today. Mm -hmm. Our gladness, our joy, when we're serving him, it should be coming from our heart, not lip service, but from our heart. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, you can fool the people, but you can't fool God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, to, um, because he says right there um, to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be um, with the gladness of heart. You know, he's like, he's done blessed you. And because you didn't serve him with that. And he says, you know, uh, that you must serve him in spirit and in truth, you know? Right. So we, uh, in order to even serve God, it has to, it's a heart condition, as, okay. as we've always said, it It comes from the heart, amen, and he knows the intentions of your heart, he knows uh, all of our hearts, and then it references Nehemiah um, chapter um, 9, and then it has there in 35 through 37, it says, where they have not served thee in their kingdom, and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them, and in the large and fat land which thou givest before them, neither turned they from their wicked works. 
Behold, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou givest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. And it yielded much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Mm -hmm. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. So if you look at that and you talk about it today, you know, because God says, he talks about it, that these times, these perilous times we live in, it's going to be just like the times with Noah before the flood. You know, people right. were doing what they wanted to do, sinning and doing right. everything right up right. into the flood. He said, having weddings, giving birth, mm -hmm. all of that. And so we're seeing that today and, and going back to 35 in there where it says in their kingdom, because we know there's God's kingdom and then there's Satan's kingdom too, because that's exactly what he told Jesus when he was on that mount. He said, bow to me and these kingdoms will be yours. These kingdoms that Satan has reigned over. And then when we pray, we said, we say, our father, which are in heaven, thy kingdom come, come. thy kingdom. Mm -hmm. So God's kingdom, when we say we're operating in two separate kingdoms, you know, we're, we're in this world, but not of this world. Our kingdom is not here in the presence. We setting up treasure in heaven. Amen. That's uh, what he's talking about. They're serving those kingdoms. And then it says, uh, you're turning from their wicked works. So it's like, uh, as Pastor quoted last time, you know, if my people will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, and we're seeing where people are walking this earth and they're not humble. So we're seeing all these plagues and pestilence. Right. We're seeing all this distress. We're seeing all this stuff in our land today. Because even down there, um, it hit when he said, uh, also in 37, and also they have dominion over our bodies. We see where people, you know, you can't even travel right now if you don't get a vaccine. It, the government says you you see where laws are being put in place where you can't do what you want to do with your own body. They even have control over your own body. As you see, this stuff is today. It's not yesterday. It's today. You know, mm -hmm. we saw where um in is it St. Vincent um have front of where the, the volcano was going on and they had the rescue boats come out. If you weren't vaccinated, some people could not get in the rescue boats. They had to find travel on their own. And so this is this is what what he's talking about when, you know, you don't have control over your body and it's great distress. As we see, the world is in great distress right now. It's moaning and groaning, you know, because people are just not believing in the name of the Lord, you know? Because but, we're not serving him the way it says here. We're not serving yeah. him with joy. In it. We're not serving him with gladness. We mm -hmm. are serving the other God, little mm -hmm. G-O-D. We're serving mm -hmm. Satan. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, we're doing this, we're not doing that. That's why, uh, like I said, the book of James said, you have to examine yourself mm -hmm. to see how you are operating in this world because um, there's a lot out here. All right, let's move on because this is a heavy um, topic right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 48. Therefore shall, therefore shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. All right. And like she was saying, this is some of the things that we're going on today. We're not controlled even over our own bodies. And he's telling us right here again, he says, uh, the Lord shall sin against thee, the hunger, the thirst, the nakedness and all things and other things. If, if we're not serving him, he's going to make all things around us come against us. And this goes back to something, uh, Reverend Hutchins, you said people ask you, why does God do stuff like this? Mm -hmm. Well, if you go to, what is it, Isaiah 45 and 7, he'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into it more. Why? Because we are not serving him. Amen. He created everything. Mm -hmm. He created us to serve him. Mm -hmm. But when we put Satan above him, then we have to answer for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. We see that opposite because it's as he says, he gives us more than enough. And now he says, you know, right here, you're going to want in all things. Oh. And, it's, and poor, you know, not enough. You're hungry, you're thirsty, you're naked. You know, you're lack. You know, those are things that in God's kingdom that he says he'll take care of, you know. 
But when you go the opposite way and decide to be in disobedience, you're not under that covering, you know, that is in the Lord. All right. Do you want someone read uh, the commentary on that uh, 48, a yoke of iron? Because that's in that verse. The states. Okay. Of... <laughs> okay. A yoke of iron speaks metaphorically of bondage. So, so severe, so severe that it is inescapable. Prisoners of wars wear yokes to still secure them against escape and to humiliate them. Jeremiah describes the Babylonian ca captivity of Judah as one in which the people would wear the yoke of oppression. That's in Jeremiah 27, 7 through 8, until the Lord broke it. Um, and it, it tells you the different passages, Jeremiah 8, 14. All right, will someone get Jeremiah 27, um, read 7 and 8, please? Someone get um, Jeremiah. I got 28. Okay, 28, 14. Jeremiah 27, um, 7 and 8. 8 reads, And all nations shall serve him, and his son, and his son's son, until the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Amen. All right, uh, Jeremiah 28, 14, please. Uh, and while you're there, you can just do 30 and 8. And someone get Ezekiel. We see what Ezekiel has to say, 34, 27, please. Okay, um, I have 14, Jeremiah 28, 14 says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beast of the fields also. And then you said 30 and 8. It uh -huh. says, um, Jeremiah 30 and 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bound, bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. All right. Anyone who has Ezekiel 34, 27. 34, 27. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bonds of their yoke and delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves to them. All right, so we go back to 48. It says, uh, therefore shall you talking to the Israelites, mm -hmm. serve your enemies. Mm -hmm. If we don't do what thus says the Lord, he will have us serving other gods because he's, mm -hmm. he's going to take his hand away from you. Why should he uh, continuously um, give you things when you're not serving him? That's why he puts the blessings and the curses in here. That's why he puts the Ten Commandments in here. Mm -hmm. So we will know what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. But if, if but it said, therefore, if thy, if you're going to serve your enemies, the Lord will sin against thee. He's telling you the different things that you can come under if you're not serving him. Mm -hmm. Because we have to realize that everything that we get in this world comes from him. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's good, bad, and indifferent. Mm -hmm. You see that some bad things can come from him as well. Because yeah. what he says, I made the good and I made Amen. the evil. I, the Lord did that, made all. Oh, God, didn't he say? Yeah. I, the yeah. Lord, thy God did mm -hmm. that. So we yeah. have to realize that everything that's done is not necessarily coming from Satan. It's coming yeah. from our disobedience. Yeah. 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 Because it, it says it is, it is no longer a, mat a matter of if you disobey but rather you did not obey the Lord your God and you did not serve the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. So these, caref the, these 
curses therefore are certain and they will come upon you. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. He's being very emphatic there. He doesn't want them to say, well, I don't understand. This yeah. is one reason why you see uh, Moses preaching these three sermons. He wants them to understand what thus says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as I said, going to um, our churches, and I'm not coming down on this sometimes, we miss the point. Yeah. Because we're not getting what thus says the Lord. We're mm -hmm. getting what thus says the man because the man has put it in his way and he's not going to say anything that will probably make people feel a little bad or turn them away. Mm -hmm. He wants them to come to him. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that's building their his kingdom. kingdom. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. see, we want God's kingdom Amen. to come. We yeah. want God's will to be done. Yeah. Then we can have that unspeakable joy. Mm -hmm. And what did I say? Joy doesn't come from the outside. It comes from within. Happiness comes mm -hmm. from the uh, outside. That's the outside stimuli. Okay, I just wanted to get that verse. Um, anybody else on that verse? Yeah, I love it too uh, with the commandments because uh, 1 John 5 and 3, it says, uh, for this is the love of God that who keeps us, keeps his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. So, you know, um, I love how uh, Brother Hutchins put it prior to a couple studies ago, because it's God telling you exactly what to do and then what not to do. What's going to happen if you don't do it? Uh, for example, you know, you have a child and you tell them, don't touch the stove. The stove is hot. And if they don't touch it, they save themselves from all the destruction that is to come. They won't have to know what it feels like to be burned. But. They go touch the stove. There's consequences that come with touching the stove. Now there's third degree burns. There's this, there's that. So it's like God saying these commandments because it's going to keep you. I created you in him. We live, move and have our being. He created us for a certain purpose, you know, and you can see that purpose from the beginning when he stuck Adam there. You know, even he said he created us to have dominion over it. Um, the, the problem is that you want it to be disobedient you know, and take from the other tree that he told you don't eat from. So with that being said, we're still continuously taken from that tree of disobedience, yes. you know, right. in, in life today, because he said his commands aren't grievous. They're not going to cause you because he says that he blesses. He doesn't add any sorrow to it. And that hits on what pastor and Reverend Hutchings was talking about, because we're seeing all the sorrow coming from the disobedience, how it can look temporal, like you're doing well. But that sorrow is going to hit out over time. And as Pastor said, you know, you'll be going through through it and you'll you'll be thankful that you went God's way and you didn't get it quicker. You know. Another thing about uh, it says uh, iron up on the neck, the yokes. The yoke. We see people yoked up today. <laughs> Let's start with the prisons. Yeah, they're in bondage. They put uh, not the yoke around the neck as much as they used to, but they put the cuffs on your wrist. That's a yoke. Chains on your feet. That's on your feet. Those mm -hmm. are yokes. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes we are yoked with um, our jobs and anything that oppresses us. Yeah. Sometimes we can overextend ourselves and get into too much debt. What is that but a yoke? Mm, amen. Okay. We have to depend on God and see what his word says that is going to create that joy in our life. Yeah. See what's going to give us that gladness of heart yeah. in our life. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, 49, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Mm -hmm. and, and 50, a nation of fierce continents, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. Mm -hmm. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, 
or the increase of thy kind or flocks of thy sheep until he have destroyed thee. All right, let's stop and uh, ponder on these um, verses because there's a lot there as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what does it say over there? Um, talking about the, um, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar. There they were talking about Assyria, say from mm -hmm. the far end of the earth. But we have other countries now that's causing havoc in this land that we're in today. Come on now. We have uh, people in this land, he says, nations that you don't understand. We have people right around us on jobs we're on or whatever. We can't understand their language. They can't understand ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he has what he's talking about here. We can see a lot of it today. Yeah. He says, a nation fears the countenance, which shall not regard the person. Um, okay. The next verse oh. there. Okay. Then I'll let you have it. It said, he shall eat the fruit of thy, any other words. We can have plenty mm -hmm. today and tomorrow we can have nothing. nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much got a peek at that at the beginning of this virus. Mm -hmm. People were going to the stores. They were hoarding. You go there. There was nothing on the shelves. Amen. Yeah. We didn't know. We didn't know it was going to be the way it is now. We can go to the stores and there's plenty. But at the beginning of this virus, people were fearful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they, what they could see on the shelves, they were wondering, is this what it's going to be like? Are we going to have enough food to feed our families? Mm -hmm. Later for the toilet paper. But are we going to have enough food to feed our families? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the go to uh, Costco's and BJ's, those yeah. shelves were just practically empty at the beginning of this virus. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what is going to befall us. Mm -hmm. But while we are able and standing halfway on our feet, do what God has said, say what he's saying for us to do. Yeah. Love him because he is the one preparing for us. Yeah. Help to take care of our neighbors who have less than us. If we don't have it financially, we don't have it in goods, give them a kind word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometime a smile and a kind word will go a long way. Mm -hmm. You see people that um, contemplating suicide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just a kind word. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just a smile. Mm -hmm. We take things all, all, all the time. We think in material sense. Mm -hmm. But it's not always material. It's the love in our heart that we are going to exude to others. Mm -hmm. They will see us and probably feel better about it. Okay. Anybody else on those verses? Mm -hmm. Just go down. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trusted thee throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. All right, let's stop before we get too far, because it's getting heavy here. Go back to 52 and read the commentary on that, please. Mm -hmm. for, well, it has commentary for 49 to 52 where it says, the nation from far turned out to be Assyria who besieged Samaria, Israel's capital city, for three years until the city was forced to surrender. Okay, 2853 through 57 on the Commentary. 53. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not go there. Let's just uh, go back to that. Uh, so can someone explain to me what he's talking about? He shall besiege thee and all thy gates. Can you tell me what he's talking about? He's there? taking over. He's coming to take over. Like we've seen um, uh, example being Africa. 
you know, land of plenty, everything, any natural resources there, diamonds, anything you want is there. But we've seen where foreign countries have come over into that land and have now pillaged and everything else and destroyed to the point where the people are so displaced. Um, they don't really have control over their own land. You know, you've seen stuff become destitute. Uh, and that includes um, people forget sometimes that Egypt is in Africa. So that includes all that area over there, too. That includes Syria and everything else like that, too, because that that part connects from Africa to that Asian continent over there is where you're sitting with Jordan and Yemen and all that stuff. So you've seen it all happen. And we saw in in 9-11 where America thought they were big, bad and bold. You know, we did got comfortable and you see where people come over from other countries and they do some stuff and then wars right. start to happen. And mm -hmm. so now we're going in different countries, taking over, bombing and making their lands destitute. So we see this stuff come fulfillment today. You know, mm -hmm. it's still going on today, you know. Mm -hmm. So he gives him a purse. Per OK, in my commentary here, I, I, I it gave me a it opened my eyes when he said, the horrors of the besieged cities, um, the two worst possible curse were saved were saved until the um consolation, the the conclusion of the sermon, and then specifically illustrate the siege and the exile. The foreign nation would be swift and powerful like an eagle. The Babylonians are compared. Um, um, compared among other things with a sweeping vulture, a uh, brutal force looking and without pity, destructive, um, destroying the grains, the vineyards and the olive trees and killing the youngs and the livestock and throughout all, throughout laying siege to all the cities throughout Israel Israel's land, no wonder when the Israel would be totally ruined. It's like they said that um, uh, Moses was left this to the end of his, his sermons to show them the, the, the force in which God's um, wrath is going to come when they disobey. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. All right, um, mm -hmm. Reverend Thompson, I'll go to you mm -hmm. and your Joshua. Did yes. he not besiege that with those walls come tumbling down? Yes, he did. Right around he took everything. AI, didn't he take mm -hmm. it all? Yes, he did. All right. Uh, we can all mm -hmm. also bring that closer. He says, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have built mm -hmm. up ourselves, mm -hmm. and we take so much credit for it ourselves, Thanks. and we haven't given God the credit for what we have accomplished ourselves. Mm -hmm. God can besiege it. He can tear it down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What did I say? We are only one paycheck away from destruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, okay, yes, we can look at those foreign countries, but yeah. bring it on home. Bring it home. Mm -hmm. bring it home. Mm -hmm. You can see people losing their homes, mm -hmm. losing their cars. Mm -hmm. And if you look far enough behind that, a lot of them have gotten stuck into, look what I've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look what I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you can't be around me. I'm this and I'm that. Mm -hmm. But what he says, I'm the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. I am a jealous God. Mm -hmm. If he gave it to us, you take it better away. stop it away. and think about where it came from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right in the beginning of Genesis, he created everything. Yeah. yeah. And you say, well, I did it with my own hands. Where'd your hands come from? Mm -hmm. Where did the material come from that you're yeah. using? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in everything, he said, in everything, and I'll put it the way he said here, all things, all yeah. things give thanks. Yeah. Give thanks. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to get that out because it's a, 53 is really powerful. Just want to get that out before we got to 53. Okay. Amen. So we're on 54. Um, let's just read 53 over because that's powerful, please. All right, 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters, which the Lord thy God have given thee in the siege, 
and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're saying this this is this is kind of tough here. Yeah, can't and thy shall eat the fruit of thy own bodies, mm -hmm. the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters. What is that? Cannibalism. Yeah. All right. Somebody go to uh, someone get Leviticus 26, verse 29. Someone get Second Kings, uh, the sixth chapter, 28, 29. Somebody get Jeremiah 19 and 9, please. I have Jeremiah 19 9 states. Um, oh, is that Jeremiah? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. It states, and I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one, every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and strictness wherewith their enemies, and they and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. All right, All right so it should eat that. We are saying, oh, how could we do that? How could we do that today? It's going to get that bad. We do, who he said, what did he say over in Revelation? Mm -hmm. We'll hate the day that we were ever born, born. if yeah. we're still here. Mm -hmm. All right, so who has uh, Leviticus 26 29? Leviticus 26 and verse 29 says, And ye shall eat the flesh of your own son, your sons. And the flesh of your daughter shall be eaten. All right. Who has uh, who second, second king? king. And uh, while that's about to get limitation two and twenty. Uh, second Kings chapter six verse twenty four thirty one. It says, and it came to pass after this that uh, Ben Benadad. King of Syria gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of the <laughs> and the fourth part of the calf of Doug's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing up by the wall, uh, was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I come help thee? Uh, out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered, this woman said unto me, give thy son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall. And the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth with thin upon his flesh. 31. Then he said, God do so and more also to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of uh, Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. Amen. All right. We okay. Who has did someone get lamentation two and twenty? Two and twenty. Mm -hmm. yeah, lamentation two and twenty says, "Behold, O Lord, I consider to to whom thou hast done this. Shall the woman eat their fruit and children of the spawn along? Shall the priests and the prophets be slain?" in the sanctuary of the Lord. All right. Now, can you give us an example of where you've heard of people eating other people? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. This day um, and time. Flight 571, um, it crashed and um, there was, they were up there for 72 days, the plane mm -hmm. crashed and they wind up eating. Um, That's right some of the, the, the passengers mm -hmm. in order to stay alive. We will say, you know, some of us will say, oh, I'd never, I'd never do that. That's just revolving. I'd never do that. Never mm -hmm. say never because never is a long, long time. Mm -hmm. We don't know in this life while we're living, we don't know what we are going to have to do in order to survive. Yeah. Say, I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to eat my children. 
I wouldn't want to eat the flesh of another human being. Mm -hmm. But as you said, that was that was truth, where they had to eat another human being in order to stay alive. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And so, but what he's telling them there, this what this is what will happen. Yeah. All right. It's gonna get that bad in these times. I mean, he said even in, in Luke, you know, and and um uh, that it's going to get to the point where those who had babies are not even going to want to have, you know, want to have children because right. it's going to be that bad. And it gets to that. You think about famine, you know, and you think about what's not going to what's not going to happen, you know, or what you think you won't do. But God knows the heart because certain things, you know, you say you won't do. You start to compromise as, as Second Kings. You're looking at that. It's like food is getting more expensive. Because that's yes. exactly what it was. It said the head of an ass was sold for four score. And we saw that was almost close to, if not triple the price that it was for the bride. You know, we were just reading about the 50 shekels. So mm -hmm. you're looking at all that. And then it said even they're paying for dung, which is which is animal feces, you know, which is due to mm -hmm. they're paying for that just to eat that, to eat animals. Mm hmm. That it's that bad. It's gotten yeah. that bad to where food food is that scarce. And we sit here in America and are are comfortable, but you know, around the world, it's in it's already to that in some places. It well, really is. we are we now we have an opportunity to turn it around. Go back mm -hmm. to give my people. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to do the will of God. Yeah. If if um our brothers and sisters out here would get into the word and yeah. see what thus says the Lord mm -hmm. and try to, we have what you call a remnant. Yeah. So if the others would join force, yeah. giving God praise, yeah. because it's getting worse every day, the mm -hmm. earthquakes, the fires, the this, mm -hmm. that, the other one. And then I can only speak about Stafford. They're tearing down every tree here in Stafford. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The trees hold the ground together. Mm -hmm. So now once they unearth all these trees, what's going to happen to the land? Yeah. Not only that, Our the farmers are not farming. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are not coming into a good place. Mm -hmm. We think it's good because we see all these beautiful homes. Mm -hmm. We see everything happening around us. But you better go back and check with God and see what happened when you just didn't we just read certain trees yep. you're not supposed to destroy? Amen. Didn't we just read they that back here? You ain't supposed to cut them up. Yeah. That's right. So we are adding to our own destruction, yeah. but not doing what thus says the Lord. There's a way to see. We've got go ahead. Go ahead with it. There's a way, the way to see right. right unto man, but the end of death, death or, or destruction. destruction. That, that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are doing it to ourselves. We can't blame anybody else. Amen. Amen. If we have a little piece of land around our house, get out there and plant some vegetables in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do something mm -hmm. to help the self. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> 54. <clears throat> so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. His eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he had nothing left in nothing left him in the seeds and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. Mm. 56 the tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter all right we see here where this is um the tender up there in 54 right uh so that the man in other words if that man has gotten to the point where he has no uh, compassion or that woman have gotten so they have no compassion for everybody, for anybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what you all got out of that, but mm -hmm. that's what 
I got out of it. Anybody else on those verses? No, that's what did exactly. you get out of there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly what they got there, you know, that man, the time of, you know, in those last two verses, 56 and 57, he's <clears throat> talking about that, that man and that woman where they're, you know, they come to that point where they don't care about anything, nobody around them. That's right. Because they're, they're at a point where, you know, it's, it's like it's either me or them. Me, myself, and I. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. God is That's love. It. An absent God, that's what you're going to have. Uh -huh. is, is me, myself, and I. Because uh -huh. that, that's what it is. Like you said, the we gods, little G, you know? Uh -huh. And so it's getting to a point where you see, you know, people are not even, they don't care about the children that they birth. They don't care about things. They have no empathy. They have their, you know, they can go out and kill somebody and and sleep at night because they don't have any empathy That's within right. their soul, you know? So, you know, mm, mm, mm. <sighs> It's hard. It's, this is a hard passage, but it's so true to what it's going to be like. You know, you hit revelations. This, this, this is only the beginning. You know That's what I mean? Right. It's what it's going to be like. And it's sad because as Christians, you know, and as believers, I won't say just Christians, but as believers in God, you know that it's all because of the disobedience. It's all because you didn't hearken unto what thus saith the Lord, you know? And our end of days as believers are not going to look like everybody else's. But the sad part is that you still got to go through because God has a purpose for all those who that he had called before the foundations of the earth. So mm -hmm. even as, as we do this, you know, go forth and and teach about God's word is so that we can turn from our wicked ways and so that you can acknowledge, yes, what I've been doing is wrong before mm -hmm. you have to be humbled into that position. Mm -hmm. Because as he said, you know, uh, right there where we are read, you know, it, it's going to get to the point where every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, yeah. you know, so you want to confess and, and, and believe in God before it gets to the point where you have no choice mm -hmm. but to see because he's already come and now it's too late. Like he said, you'll be looking and you can't find him. That's you why know? a whole lot of people is scared to read the book of Revelation because they don't want to acknowledge that mm -hmm. all this is going to come to fruition. Uh, God cannot be such a terrible God. Yeah. But you see here, right here, Moses is doing the same thing that Revelation is doing, is supposed to be doing to us, warning them mm -hmm. that all this terribleness mm -hmm. is going to happen mm -hmm. because of your disobedience. Mm -hmm. So wake up, listen, and start obeying. And you, believe, might yeah. want, you might not want to believe this, you might, you might turn your back and say, no, this can't happen. But the, the sooner you start acknowledging and knowing that this is going to happen, yeah. the sooner you will start to turn your life over to God and say, God, have mercy upon me so this don't happen to me yeah. and my children. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's one thing about it. They says, I'm a new Christian. I'm a New Testament Christian. But they have to realize, first and foremost, Jesus didn't come in the New Testament. No. He was already there. He was there mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what they don't realize when they mm -hmm. get the revelation, mm -hmm. Jesus has given you an opportunity to understand from Genesis to, yes. um, to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Then what he's going to do. He's gonna flip that script. Yep. Yeah. That's what Re Revelation is all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you hear him flipping mm -hmm. the script. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wasn't obedient. You didn't obey. Okay. Now look what I have for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. What it said. What my father said back over there in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He tried to uh, warn them. Me and my father's one. I tell everybody, study the Book of John. Me mm -hmm. and my father are one. You can't have one without the other. Without the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before Moses was, he said, I was. I was. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is going to flip that script. Yes. And when you get the revelation, but he also tells us in Revelation, you're blessed if mm -hmm. you read it. Yeah. But mm -hmm. another reason why they don't read it, if you don't know anything about the Old Testament, it's kind of hard to understand Revelation. Yeah. 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 You got to break it down. You must, yes. You must come in at the door. It must come in first mm -hmm. beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just awesome, awesome book. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, you know, 
um, when Jesus came, uh, word was made flesh. He said, I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. He yeah. was fulfilling. So now that love is there and it's available to you if you accept it. But the second time, and she said he flipped the strip is because he's coming to destroy. Mm -hmm. So that's why he said he didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill that first part, he fulfilling the old Testament verses and everything else. Jesus come. But the next time Jesus comes is to destroy, you know, mm -hmm. One thing that I cannot understand, people believe that Satan was there in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Why can't they believe that Jesus, Jesus was there was the in the beginning? Yeah. And we know Satan was all up in there mm -hmm. because back in what Revelation 12 is where yeah. he had, uh, kicked him out of heaven mm -hmm. and onto the E A R T H into the earth. Mm -hmm. All right, let me let's not go here because I get carried away. I was reading it, yeah, because it said he's coming, he's coming after us with a vengeance because okay. you know his time is cut short, and that's what you're mm -hmm. seeing in the earth. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. Y'all phones going off. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's 1016. <laughs> yes, it's 1015, and we have gotten the green light to wrap it up. So let us go ahead. Let's go ahead and go around the room, um, Brother Thompson. Amen, amen. I was just um, what sort of caught my eye was a you know a reference um, from Deuteronomy to where it referenced Nehemiah. I believe it referenced thirty four and um, thirty five, but I went sort of one verse um, before that, which was thirty three, where it has, "How be it, thou art just in all that is brought upon us." But thou has done right, but we have done wickedly. And to me, that was sort of speaking on everything that you know we have re we're reading today, where it says, you know, we know right from wrong. That's right. We know right from wrong, and we're given a chance. We're given the chance to do right, you know, and turn from you know evil and you know do right thing. That's right. So you know, all these things, all these sort of punishments and curses that you know they're speaking on, is because we're not doing what we know to do. That's right. So, you know, as, you know, as I'm thinking about, you know, as reading this, we're just thinking about, we, you know, we have the opportunity, we have the chances. We just got to, you know, take those opportunities and chances to do what we need to do. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Um, Brother Hakeem? Um, yeah, I'm going to hit on this, um, this commentary because I think it's very good. It says, uh, some of God's promises come in the form of warnings. These are not meant to coerce us to, into obedience, but rather to remind us of what life apart from a loving God is like. Uh -huh. And then it goes to say, if God's love is the source of all that is good, separating ourselves from that love will bring the natural consequences of sin and evil. So uh -huh. before you even put any curses out there, when you separate yourself from the Lord, it's naturally inhabited evil that's going to come about. With being right. separated from the Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um, Reverend Thompson. Um, Revelations uh chapter 320. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. Amen. So God is now here, and he says, The word is near thee. Even in my mouth, that's the word that we preach, you know. So the word is here. The word was made flesh. It's here. It's here and available for you. And as both brothers said, it's, it's available to you, you know, not just because you don't want to burn in hell. But he said, love the Lord that God. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments because you love him. Um, and getting into his word and, and, and accepting him is now. You know, if you don't know the Lord, accept him. You know, accept him into your life and watch, watch it change because he says many affliction of the righteous, but God did from them all. So, so he'll continue to keep us, you know, just like he did in, with the, in Egypt with those plagues, you know, they were outside of it, those Israelites. And while everyone else was going through those plagues, God will keep you, you know, and he, he'll keep you covered. Um, that's not to say that things will not touch you because if he means for them to touch you, they will. Um, but 
he will keep you if you keep your mind stayed on him. And so it's going to come to a time where he says that you're going to search for me and I'm not going to be found because when Jesus comes back to get, it's going to be too late. You know, so he's, he's, he's standing at the door right now and knocking. All you got to do is open up and let him in. Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. Um, um, you've, you've heard it from everyone that the, um, the consequences for disobedience is is great sin. Um, over to you, uh, Pastor. You know, Pastor put it all together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I like what uh, Brother Chris read there about the warning. The book, I can see the book, the Old Testament as a warning, as in the three sermons that uh, Moses preached in the end here. Mm-hmm. He was warning those coming up behind, you know, ready to cross over. Now let me warn you and tell you what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. He gave them the curses. Oh, I love it. Where it says one group was on one mountain, another group was on the other mountain. If they didn't understand it, one yelled out the blessings and one yelled out the curses. Mm-hmm. So we have 66 chapters here, 66 books that is going to lead us in the right direction. And just realize in the midst of a garden was a tree of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Evil has been here since the very beginning. But we have a God who created all things, Mm -hmm. all things. And he is patient when he said he's long suffering. Mm -hmm. He will give us an opportunity to turn our lives around. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the people who don't know him. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people feel, feel that I've done so badly that he wouldn't accept me. No. As I said, we're trying to bring this word out here to let you know there are Rahabs. You hear me referring to Rahab, who was a harlot, but she's in the line of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Ruth came out of the line of the Moabites, who were idolatries, idolaters. She is in the line of Jesus Christ. When we read this Bible, we see that God is not looking for your perfectness because you can't be perfect by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's only through the grace of God that he will clean you up. Mm -hmm. Now, once he cleans you up, don't turn back because we're coming to the point where we're going to see where uh, the children of Israel, some of them did go back into Egypt. Mm-hmm. But he told them, that's where you'll die. Mm-hmm. So in other words, with us, when we go back into our sins and just forget about where we've come from, mm-hmm. sometimes we will die not only spiritually, but physically. Mm-hmm. So I would say to people, please just realize that this word is truth. Mm-hmm. What did Jesus say? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man mm-hmm. goes to the Father but by me. But mm-hmm. what he wants us to do is turn it around before it gets too late, before we die physically. Turn it around. Mm-hmm. We can all turn around. Mm-hmm. And that is the crux of, of um, 714 of my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. That's what he's talking about. Yes. Because when we're trying to uh, walk with you and show you that it all began after the fall with Noah's three sons mm-hmm. that he populated this world. So we all came from one. There's no separation. There wasn't, um, <laughs> there was, no, I can't go into that, but it was no separation. It was all one whenever they got off. Now, what God is showing us by him using sinful people to do his will, his work, his way. Because sometimes those who have uh, crossed over, they've left their old ways behind. Then what is it, that tenderness, they mm-hmm. forget where they come from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have to realize that we were not always where we are today. Mm-hmm. All right, that's all I have to say because I'll keep going. 
Amen. Amen. And um, there you have it. We're going to go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for this year word. Thank you, Lord God, for this year or your understanding. Help us, Lord God, to look to you always for better understanding. And even when we find ourselves being disobedient and we can't help ourselves, Lord God, you can help us, Lord God. So help us to turn to you with all our disobedience and all our misunderstanding so that you can take us out of all confusion and put us into the light. Thank you for today and thank you for everything that you've said and done here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we have another one of this Bible study on Wednesday night, starting at 6 p.m. And it's the continuation of this Bible study on Sunday morning. Don't miss it. Um, pray with us on Tuesday. The prayer line is on fire. It is saving. It is helping. It is healing. And it's changing the atmosphere. Because whenever you put the word of God in the atmosphere, change is going to come. So um join us at uh, 605-313-5388 with an access code of 379-088 pound um that is our, our prior line um next sunday we'll be right back here same time same place at 9 30 for the continuation of the Bible study in our sunday school and right after sunday school we have our sermon at 10 30 a.m do not miss our sunday morning sermon on ministry of hope christian church facebook youtube and sometimes on instagram donation to this ministry can be made at ministries of hope christian church.com using the or the paypal again we love you we don't take it for granted that you're here with us and may God bless your lives in a mighty way. Have a blessed week.